First, a warning. Chicago has a problem. No, it's not that we don't have a lot of jobs. We do. But we do see a talent shortage. The problem could get worse if we don't address it now. This talent shortage is causing salaries to skyrocket. Um, it's bad for businesses, great for the workers, but how can a business remain competitive when they constantly have to pay more for the same talent? And we're seeing a lot of job changing back and forth. Workers are moving from one company to another to another, chasing those ever-increasing lures of higher salaries. So what do we do? Do we try to lure experience new media talent from other hubs like California? I don't know about you, but if I were Californian, I wouldn't want to come face a Chicago winter like we had last year. Or do we focus on the current um, and upcoming workforce that's right here in Chicago and come up with programs to build the talent workforce that we need to satisfy the jobs that we have now and are going to have in the future? So Jeff and Matt. Where are the new media workers of the future going to come from? <laughs> and what about the people our businesses need right now? Go for it, man. <laughs> well, I'm not supposed to sell the program, so I was going to say they're all coming from DePaul. <laughs> but um, the, uh, well, I mean, I'm, I, I think they're going to come. <laughs> I'll give you an example. This is going to be sort of a weird one. But I, uh, I gave a presentation to a bunch of 7th and 8th graders uh, last spring. My mom's a librarian at a junior high, so I was uh, talking about media. And I, uh, I asked them off the cuff, kind of, uh, who here has used iMovie? And the whole class raised their hand. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. I think you're so tough. Uh, who, who here knows uh, Final Cut? And half the kids raised their hand. And I was like, all right, this is creepy. You know, <laughs> children of the corn kind of thing. And, um, and then I said, OK, who here knows After Effects? And this little kid in the back is like, uh, like almost embarrassed. And uh, that's where they're coming from. I mean, it's part of their lives. This is all part of how they're growing up. I have a seven-year-old and a two-year-old, and they are on the computer all the time. So I think that's, it's just the generation that's coming through. That's where they're coming from. Um, I think that that's obviously true. I mean, obviously kids you know, grow up with uh, computers. But uh, let me speak from a slightly different perspective and to say that from what, what I see is um, new media workers, new media employees, people with those kinds of skill sets, they're going to come from people here today, whether they're in seventh grade or whether they haven't been in seventh grade in 40 years. It's going to be something that's going to be intuitive and it's going to be something that they really enjoy doing. Because more than anything, I think what we're talking about here is a trade. And it's not an education, it's not something that you learn in formal education. It's people who really embrace it and embrace the computer and embrace those kinds of, those kinds of skills. And, um, and again, to your point, I, I'll, try not to, or I'll try to make the commercial portion of this uh, answer short. Digital Boot Camp, we try to take a, a super practical approach. We teach people um, exactly those things that they want to know. Uh, we try to teach it to them in a very, very you know, short and efficient manner. But I, I think that, um, I don't really think age is a barrier, whether it's uh, somebody who's very, very young or someone who's, uh, I hesitate to use the word, older. But I will say this, uh, at Chicago Portfolio School, we do see a lot, a lot of 20-year-olds who you could use that definition. You could say they grew up with a computer. Um, but frankly, for a lot of people, that just means knowing how to work Facebook. Mm -hmm. and, um, and so I don't really think whether you're 10 or 20 or 30 or 40, um, it matters too much. It really matters as to whether or not you're willing to embrace the, um, embrace the technology. Right, well, to piggyback on that, the, uh, the, the interest is there. Um, but I just, you know, the only example I can go from is uh, my own. And uh, at the university that I'm at, there wasn't any, any media five years ago. There was, not, there was no program or anything like that. It's just not known for that. And in five years, the program that we started is the largest undergraduate program in the college. And on the undergraduate level, just this fall alone, we just started last week, um, the numbers increased 55% from last fall. And on the graduate level, the numbers went up 88%. Yeah. 
So, you know, I'm not just saying it's, it's all these kids coming in. It's like new media is everywhere. Yeah. It's, it's, it's in every business now. And I think the kids that are coming through, that it's just part of their lives, it's, it's one group, and they're already part of that. Um, well, whether they're coming through now or they haven't, there's a lot of jobs out there for mm -hmm. them. And mm -hmm. I think that's kind of what there your point are. is. Mm -hmm. It's the Wild West out there. Yeah. And a couple of observations. Why not introduce new media jobs like web coding, video production at the high school level, uh, much like we do with skilled trades. Um, we could, well, not every career does require a four-year college degree, and we could also give our disadvantaged students a great option at a career by teaching this at the high school level. Yeah, yeah it, if, if there was a 12-year-old who knew flash development, I could get him a job in three hours. <laughs> so, absolutely, high school, grade school. College, digital boot camp, bring it on. Okay. Well, now that's the young people, but what about the uh, ubiquitous baby boomers? Um, we're not ready to retire. Should companies just throw us out because we are only familiar with traditional media, not new media? Of course not. Wouldn't it make more sense for a company to create an internal training program for their business savvy, knowledgeable, loyal workers teach them the new media skills they need, and then have that instant workforce that they need so bad. Right. The, the, I, the, to go back, you know, when I talk to my students, you know, understanding the skills is one thing. Obviously, you have to, you have to get that. You have to get that training to get, to get the job. But what it comes down to is you're not going to be, that's one aspect of being hired. That's one aspect of working at a company. The, the main aspect is who you are. Mm -hmm. I mean, are you a decent person? Are you a good colleague? Are you a good, you know, uh, worker? Um, if you could have the skills on top of that, that's even better. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, um, the training of the, of the of, uh, you know, on the skill level is, is one thing, but, you know, I, I, I still think that there are people that are fantastic colleagues that know the business backwards and forwards, but they haven't been really exposed to exactly. this new media. And it's just a matter of, do the, does the company value them as colleagues and workers enough to sink in whatever funds that would, that would require to train them? Right. Um, I'm all for retraining, again. I, I will say this, though. Uh, when we train, we do a lot of corporate uh, classes, so uh, corporations send us their employees. And I would say that, in my experience, it would be great if the corporations, if the employers made some sort of audit and to find out who among those people who uh, don't understand the technology are truly, truly interested in it. Because again, I'm gonna go back to where this is really all a matter of interest and embracing the technology. And just because they would like to be retrained doesn't necessarily mean they're a good candidate. Exactly. Um, but uh, can I just say one other thing? It's like, in addition to talking about training employees, um, I think the other thing that we need to do, and I, I'm not sure what percentage of the folks out there are employees versus employers, but I think that uh, there needs to be a lot of retraining of employers. The bosses need to have classes. And by that I mean that um, I find that there are a lot of people in the design business and the advertising business and some sort of the traditional media businesses who really are, um, they're really not familiar with the technology. And it's not just a matter of, okay, I'm gonna become a programmer, but you need to know you need to know, frankly, what you don't know. Exactly. And you need to really educate yourself. And we, we've started to do classes for bosses as well, but you need to understand the languages and the formats and the interaction designs so that you can be a better boss, so you can develop better products, so you can hire better people. Sure. How many job apps have we seen out there these days that ask for a web designer who can um, write content and do PHP and ActionScript programming? Right. So. Plus, <laughs> Plus .NET. And .NET, yeah, and, and don't forget C Sharp. So let me ask you, what specific skills are new media employees going to need? And how do you make sure the training that you're giving is current and what employers actually need? We won't say what they're looking for, because sometimes they don't know what they want, but what they need. Well, I mean, I, I think you brought up a really good point. I mean, I think it is, you know, having a really good fix on what it is, uh, you know, what the technology that a particular new media project requires. Um, like I said, really having a firm understanding of what you know and what you don't know, and then being able to go out and to get people with very, very specific skill sets, the kind of people that, you know, are going to help make your project 
um, succeed. I would say that in addition, and, and the future, you're talking about the future, the future being little kids who know um, everything about film. I think also the future is going to be, um, you know, the final merging of people with really great ideas and really great design with the people who know the technology. And I do see that there's a big difference right now. Mm -hmm. uh, there, you've got like sort of two sides of the two sides of the coin and eventually what you're going to want to do is hire people who really have great ideas and who really understand good design and the technology isn't quite so much a barrier. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, follow up with what you're asking. I, I just, when I see students um, that are graduating and they put together their reel uh, that they're going to send out to employers, I, uh, I tend to see a lot of students putting it's kind of the Facebook world, you know, it's, everything's in there. It's like, oh, I have these Photoshop skills and I have, I learned some Maya, I learned some motion graphics and I was a cinematographer on this film, I'm going to put that in there and I will ask them, well, what, <laughs> what kind of job are you looking for? I mean, uh, they have to be much more specific. You have to pick something that they're really good at, that they can uh, demonstrate that they're really good at that uh, in a reel and focus on that. Yeah. Um, and I, you know, I, if I could just ask employers, I mean, hopefully they can, they can understand that one person can't do everything. You know, if, if, if they can target what they're looking for. A lot of times I feel like employers don't, don't know what they really want. And it's kind of like, well, we need somebody in new media. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means a lot of things to a lot of different people. Well, put it all together and, and let's get the ad out and hopefully we'll get somebody in that can do a lot of this stuff. So I think they need to be a little more specific in communicating with it. And also on the academic side, I'd, I'd hope that, um, I, I'm lucky to be in a program that allows us to change our curriculum fairly uh, quickly. It, it, that universities work in glacial time, you know, it's like, you change your curriculum once every 50 years. And um, we, we've been pretty lucky. And what, what I'd, I'd hope to ask uh, the industry is to, to be able to, to communicate more with universities um, in the city about what, what you need. What, what, what do you need? It's not that hard to, to do a curriculum change now in, in certain institutions. And the difficulty is the communication. They just need to express what they want, and I, I guarantee we'll be able to, to get that in place. Yeah. How about advisory boards between industry and schools? Yeah, for sure. We're, we're just uh, starting um, to look for an advisory board for uh, the school that I'm uh, a part of, and, which is a funny story because my program, this digital media program, started in a computer science school. And it was plopped in there, basically, and uh, the, the dean at the time said, well, you know, do, go nuts. And so we did. And in four years, it became larger than computer science did. I, I think one of the reasons is, is that in computer science, it's still a really marketable degree. I mean, you can get jobs with it. But the enrollments are still going down. Mm -hmm. And why is that? I, I think it has something to do with it's just it, it's, the perception isn't there, like it's not cool or it's not sexy enough to go into computer science. Um, and, and I think that on, on the digital media end, we have the, you know, the, the fortune position to, to be kind of the trendy thing or it's the kind of the sexy thing, so I'll go major in that. Well, I, I definitely think that um, from that standpoint, this isn't computer science, for sure. I mean, new media, if I, if I were to sort of define it really quickly, new media is about building relationships and it's about marketing and it's about design. But just to say that I also, I visit colleges a lot, and I tell them the same thing, which is the, the secret to getting the job of your dreams is to know exactly what job you're dreaming about, right. and not to try to be all things to all people. Mm -hmm. Well, it's clear that um, industry and educators are going to have to work together to get this talent force to understand, first of all, what they need, and then work with you to, to make sure that you're addressing that. So um, with that, one last statement, and this is kind of a call to action for everyone here in the audience. I want you to look at your own company. Are they offering any kind of internal training program for current employees to learn skills and, and social media and marketing? If not, demand it. You, we really need to do this. Um, my own company back in the uh, 90s when the web boom first started right before the bust, um, we took a big chance. We dared to be innovative. We noticed right away our clients were clamoring 
for talent that could build, design and build web pages. And there just wasn't anybody out there back in the, in the late early late 90s. So we took a chance. We um, invested, we partnered with a lynda.com, a training company. We flew their instructors out to the West Coast. Then we chose really great, experienced, traditional print design talent from all over the US, flew them out to the East Coast, put them up in, of all places, a nunnery. And <laughs> we worked them 12 hours a day, six days a week for three weeks. At the end of that program, these people could design and build websites. We solved the problem that we had, and we were able then to give the clients what they needed. So my call to all of you is, we need to do that now. We've got to think out of the box. We can't just be posting help wanted ads saying, well, those people must be out there somewhere that had that experience, because truthfully, they're not. They're all working. And we're not going to be able to keep luring people from other places to Chicago. So let's look at what we have, work with it, and we're going to be able to make Chicago the new media capital. Yeah. Can, I, can I just say one thing sure. also? It's like in addition to training, like I said, the employees, I, I would say that it, the calls for everybody to train themselves. So that mm -hmm. something like new media, there's nothing new about the new media. Right. You know, I mean, that you've seen it, you know, you've experienced it so that, uh, you know, you're on top of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and just to, on the academic side, because that's where I'm coming from, uh, I'd, I'd hope that uh, more universities will get a little more with today mm -hmm. as opposed to 20 years ago and be quicker to change um, their degree programs, be able to kind of stay current with what's going on because everything changes so quickly. I mean, you set up a program and in five years, it's, if it's not completely different, uh, you are out of date. Um, so that's what I'd hope, that more universities will start seeing new media as um, a viable form of <laughs> education. Okay. And, and you know, we're also, uh, we, we threw this idea out um, in liberal arts universities, you know, they have these liberal studies requirements and kind of a first year program. And one of the ideas we've been toying with is trying to have a uh, digital media studies in a first year, because like you said, Jeff, it's like students are coming in, they might be, this might be part of their being, but uh, they're really good at Facebook, but they don't know, and they can use a little Photoshop, but they really don't have the real skills yet. And I'd hope that if you expose everyone in that first year to this kind of, you know, what we're talking about, um, it'll increase the skill level of everybody, you know, as they move through the programs. Well, thank you both for participating, and Thanks. thank you. All right.